Hey guys, it's Matt Johnson, and today I'm going to be talking about color grading, and more specifically, I'm going to be talking about using LUTs or lookup tables when color grading your A7S II footage. This can also apply if you're using a Sony FS5 or an A6300 or any one of Sony's new cameras that offer their latest picture profiles. Specifically in this video, I'm going to be talking about footage that I shot with my favorite picture profile, of which there's a whole other video that I'll post a link to here. And if you're on Vimeo, there'll be a link down in the description too. So that way you're not totally confused, like what picture profile is he talking about whenever he's color grading? There's a whole other video about that. I would highly recommend watching that. More importantly than even that, I would say though, there's a first video in this series where I talk about color grading basics, and I would definitely recommend watching that, which I'll also post right here, because if you don't watch that, I'm going straight into some more advanced stuff, so you're going to be like, I'm so confused right now. So watch the picture preset video, then watch the basic color grading video, then come back and watch this one so we're all on the same page. Great. So at this point, you've already watched my first video about color grading. You know that you need a color calibrated monitor. You understand the philosophy of color grading a little bit more. And you understand curves, color wheels, the basics, if you will. Let's say you want options, though. Maybe you're wanting to mimic a camera, or you're wanting to mimic a film stock look, or you want your film to look just like a blockbuster film, and you're like, I want this wedding video to look like Michael Bay shot it, at which point I would urge you to probably not do that because that's probably not the best look for anything. But you can if you want to by using a lookup table or as it's more commonly known on the street, a LUT. Now what is a LUT? In the most basic, barest of terms, a LUT is a preset for your saturation, contrast, brightness, mid-tone shadows, highlights, everything that goes into making your image look a certain way is saved into a .cube format file that you can download or purchase from other people. There are different formats of LUTs, but most are in the dot .cube format, and there's even different points in those dot .cube LUTs. There's 17 point, 33 point, 64 point, 128 point. It can get very complicated very quickly. What you need to know is that Premiere can handle most cube files easily, and you need to keep track of which cube file you're using for which video. So that way, if you're, say, working on an editing project and you pass it off to a friend, make sure you give them the right cube file for the color grade so they're not like, this looks completely different make sure you have the same thing. What you may have heard is you can just slap a LUT on any video and say, that looks great, post it to YouTube, no need to color grade, and nothing could be further from the truth. Because the way that LUTs are made is that they are saved using certain shooting scenarios. So while I may be using a LUT that's made for the A7S and the Cine4 picture profile, it is not taking into consideration the lighting of the day, whether I'm indoors, outdoors, whether it's tungsten lighting, incandescent, fluorescent. So you need to be aware whenever you apply the LUT that you still need to go in and color grade the image to make it look as good as it can. At this point you're probably thinking, okay Matt, I got it, great, but what LUT should I use? There's a whole butt ton of options out there. At which point I would say, actually there's a metric butt ton, not just a butt ton, and I have some recommendations for you. So chill out. A couple that I would recommend checking out are Color Grading Central's Impulse series of LUTs. Those are very nice and I've used those before. Another that Craig Adams turned me on to at Wedding Film School is from a company or group or something like that. Their website is IWLTBAP. I think I got that right. And they have a pack of free LUTs that you can download and try out and some paid options. One of my favorite sets of LUTs though that I highly recommend and that I'll be using for color grading in this video is a set of D LUTs by James Miller. And one of the benefits of using these LUTs is that they are made specifically for the camera and picture profile. So he has LUTs for the Sony A7S as well as the S-Log2, S-Log3, and Cine4 picture profile. Cine4 being the one that I shoot with. And that is ideally what you want, is a LUT that's made specifically for your camera and picture profile, so you don't have to finesse it too much in post. Now as I said in one of my previous videos, which I will post over here, I shoot with the Cine4 picture profile. And I learned about that picture profile from a guy named Marion Breithauer, who's super talented and awesome. One of the benefits of the Cine4 picture profile that he said was that it's capable of using both S-Log3 LUTs and Cine4 LUTs when color grading. Now I have not found that to be the case whenever I'm color grading in Premiere. He's editing on Final Cut X so it could be different. But whenever I try to color grade the Cine4 picture profile using S-Log3 LUTs, things end up looking a little contrasty and weird and I haven't quite figured out how to match the levels properly to make that look good. So in my case, I've been using LUTs that are made specifically for the Cine4 picture profile and they've been working very well. If I do figure out how to color grade S-Log3 LUTs using the Cine4 picture profile in Premiere later on, I will make a video showing how to do that. But like I said earlier, I'm going to show you how to color grade using some LUTs made by James Miller specifically for the A7S and the Cine4 picture profile. Here we are in Adobe CC 2015. 
As you can see, I'm using the 2015.2 release, just like my previous video, and this is actually the same project. But instead of color grading it from scratch, we're going to be using a LUT. So just like before, I'm going to assume you know how to import footage, and I'm going to assume you know how to create a timeline. So we're going to jump straight into it. But let's pretend that you're done editing your footage, and at this point, you want to start color grading. I have gone through my footage here, and I have picked out my hero shot, which is my favorite shot, the shot that I believe exemplifies my video the most, shows off the most about the shadows, midtones, highlights is a good example of what I will grade. And if I can make this look good, I want the rest of my film to look as good as this. So with that, we're going to go to the color tab up at the top. And that brings up this whole Lumetri color panel, the basic correction, creative, curves, color wheels, and vignette. I went over curves and color wheels. Please go back and watch that video if you have not. But in this case, we're going to go and select creative, which is a new tab that we did not really work with before. And you notice at the top, it offers to let you put in a look. In this case, a LUT. Once you've bought DLUTs and you follow James Miller's installation instructions, whenever you click the look download menu here, it brings up a whole buttload of options. Some of them are from Adobe and built in already. Some of them are for presets that I have not messed with yet. But if you scroll down a little ways here, you'll see they start to say names. DLUT Cine4 Adder, DLUT Cine4 Ashley. This is where you want to start. So first, let's click DLUT Cine4 Adder. And you'll notice that immediately applies a look to the footage and into the preview window here. And this is a little too washed out for what I'm looking for here. I do like the flatness that's added to the shadows, but I'm not a huge fan of the look, and I don't think that's really going to exemplify what I'm going for in this wedding film. So what's cool about Premiere and the way they work with LUTs is you can start hitting these left and right arrows, and you can start going through the different LUTs. And so we're going to go through here a ways. And then if you ever want to apply one, you can just click, and it'll automatically apply. That one looks a little bit too much like a war movie, so we're going to keep on going. This is a little more like it, but I don't like how washed out it is. I really want the colors to pop. So we're going to keep on going here, a lot of options. Getting the black and white ones here, we can get, we can get really moody with things, that's pretty cool. But I've never done, I, I, I don't believe in doing mixture of black and white necessarily. So let's see here, let's go, that, that looks nice, kind of looks nice, but it's a little too washed out. But he also has these alt LUTs that have higher contrast. And I'm really liking the look of this Cadmium alt. So we're going to go with this. And the first thing you'll notice below the LUT is this intensity option. And you can actually drag it to lower the intensity of the LUT all the way down to zero like it's not even there, or increase it up to like eye bleeding levels. So we don't want to do that too much. But I'd say in this case here, that's a little too intense. So maybe we back off it to about 70%. Yeah, that looks good. It's all just in your opinion and what you want to do. Next, we're going to go down and select our friend Curves. And honestly, I really do like how the LUT has already applied a good curve to this image. But if we we're to play around with it a little bit here, selecting the, uh, the mid-tones, we can bring up the mid-tones just a hair, and that looks nice. And maybe bring down the highlights just a little bit. And I'm thinking that look, that's look, starting to look pretty good. Next, color wheels. Let's go ahead to our color wheels, shadows, mid-tones, highlights. You remember this. And I like how warm it is, but I wish it was a little bit warmer but not in the warmth that the LUT was. So I can increase the intensity a lot, but that's not what I'm really going for. I want a little bit more golden mid-tones. So about there, nothing too extreme. This is already pretty warm already, so we don't want to go too crazy with it. Pretty subtle. And then let's go over here to the highlights, and let's bring those up a little bit so that the sun shining in is a nice golden color. And then we'll go over here to the shadows and we'll play around with that a little bit. And we'll tweak that down just ever so slightly into the blue to the complementary color to the orangish yellow. And there we go. That's looking pretty darn awesome. That's a good looking hero shot. Let's turn it off. Turn it back on. That's a pretty big difference. And that is, imagine if you're watching that versus watching that. It is a totally different feel to the video. Now that we have the hero shot done, let's go on to our next shot. As in the previous video, this is the close-up of the couple here. Let's go ahead and copy the Lumetri color effect from the hero shot to this shot. And as you can see, it actually looks pretty darn awesome 
from a direct copy. In this case here, I still want to go over to the curves and maybe drop the shadows down just slightly to get those hair colors down just a little bit. That's looking nice. And let's bring down the mid-tones just a little bit so they're not glowing. We don't want glowing faces necessarily. Otherwise, as you can see, we're not having to do nearly the amount of drastic changes that we were from a flat grade. By using the LUT, it provides a great starting ground for our coloring. Let's look at our color wheels here. Maybe adjust the skin tone warmth down just slightly. And I'm really happy with that, how it looks right there. I wouldn't ever just apply a LUT and be like, it's done. But having a LUT is kind of like having training wheels for the rest of your color grade. And so it gets you 60% of the way there, 50% of the way there. The LUT gets you halfway there and then color grading gets you the rest of the way. Let's look at our next shot here. Here's Paul indoors, getting ready, looking dapper. We're gonna go ahead and copy our Lumetri color effect, paste it into this video. And ooh, that is, that is downright vintage old timey looking. It's a little too intense, I would say. So let's go to the creative tab and let's actually lower the intensity of the LUT down to 50%, let's say. And that takes some of the harshness off that red. And then let's go to our color wheel and let's bring a little less warmth out of the mid-tones. And now he's looking more naturally colored. He's not quite so crazy. And then let's go up to our curves here and let's see if we can bring a little bit more detail out in the, in the face. See, that's lighting up the side of his face there just a little bit. So he's looking pretty good. And then, oh, see, you don't want to go too extreme. It's, it's all very, very subtle. Sometimes I, when I'm talking and doing this, I feel like Bob Ross. Like, we're going to paint some happy trees here, guys. We're going to color some happy paws. <laughs> okay, so... That looks pretty good there. I like that look a lot. And I feel like that matches well with the other stuff. Let's go to our last clip here. And this is the nighttime reception dancing with all artificial lighting. And we'll copy our Lumetri color. And we'll paste it. And wow, that is kind of like how it happened with Paul. You end up with a lot more orange and reds than you really want. So we're going to go back up and we're going to drop this back down to about 50%. And as a shortcut, what you probably could have done is just gone to Paul's clip and copied that look and pasted that to this one. And that might have been even quicker. But we'll do that. Then we're gonna go down, let's reset this color wheel down to just to beginning here. And that's looking a little bit better. And let's reset the highlights. Bring the highlights back up just a little bit warm. And what I may do here even is bring the mid-tones ever so slightly down into the blue. And that'll affect our skin tones nicely and so they don't look too orange or anything like that nearly just reset them, but I think that looks pretty darn good. Next, let's go over to our curves, drop the shadows a little bit, keep the mid-tones about where they're at. I'd say that looks pretty darn good. It matches our other shots. So let's play everything back to back here, see how it looks. Hey, that looks pretty awesome. Good job, Lutz. And one of the other benefits of Lutz is that you have such a variety of starting points. So you have like nearly a hundred different LUTs just in this pack and you can pick one from the start and start color grading and really dial in exactly what you want and tweak it to get the exactly the image that you're looking for. I hope this video has been helpful to you. With a good LUT you have an amazing start to a good color grade and with a little tweaking you can make it your own. Don't expect them to do all your color grading work for you but they can be incredibly helpful as a start. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments about this video. If you do, you can leave one below or send me an email through my website, whoismat.com. You can also check out my wedding film production company, Filmstrong Productions at filmstrong.com. Thanks and have a great day.